Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Green, author of God's Healing Code, a biblical prescription restoring body and soul, and the companion success manual that provides a step-by-step, -step, seven week plan for achieving biblical help. Thanks for visiting. You're about to view a wellness video like no other. The approach is unique, relying fully on health principles taken directly from the Bible. Unlike other methods, the scriptural foundations are solid. Nothing vague or so generalized that it's hard to see the connections. On the contrary, the details are so specific that in many cases medical science is just now catching up with what the Bible reveals. What you are about to experience is as much a testimony to the validity of scripture as it is a trustworthy roadmap for restoring your health. Focusing on the issues of diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, and obesity, we are working through a straightforward, proven strategy that restores the health of everyday people like you and me. The episodes you're about to see come from the live wellness series that is offered in churches and synagogues. Currently, we are in week number three of the seven week series and the focus is on fiber. Don't worry if you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series, the content in this segment has incredible value all by itself. It truly is a standalone lesson. Because fiber is such an important part of a healthy lifestyle, there is a downloadable cheat sheet that is available for you at drchrisgreen.com. Just click on the link at the end of the video and you can download yours immediately. Thanks for visiting and now let's talk fiber. Hello and welcome to another episode of God's Healing Code Vlogcast, a place where we combine scripture and science, revealing biblical solutions for lasting health. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Green, and today we are diving into fiber, the little known nutrient that packs a huge punch to improve your health. We're about to discover how adding fiber to your diet not only is the antidote for inflammation, but can jumpstart weight loss by triggering your body to burn fat. The goal of this episode is one, know why fiber is essential for a healthy diet, two, understand how adequate fiber intake can dramatically reduce your risk for heart disease, diabetes, liver disease, irritable bowel, and cancer, and three, learn how fiber can trigger your body to burn fat and melt away unwanted pounds. So let's get started. Fiber has gotten a lot of press lately. Not something you've heard about? Well, here's a couple stats about fiber that will surprise you. For every seven grams of increased daily fiber intake, the risk for cardiovascular disease decreases by 9%. 9%, that's a big deal considering heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States and around the world. The benefit of fiber is so impressive. The British Medical Journal stated, adequate amounts of dietary fiber may be the most important health recommendation of all. Not only does fiber dramatically guard against heart disease, but it's also key in reducing digestive problems like irritable bowel syndrome, combating liver disease, and is an effective tool for melting away unwanted fat. That's right, fiber can help you lose weight. While it all may sound too good to be true, solid research proves that adequate dietary fiber delivers incredible health benefits. The best part is that increasing fiber is easy to do. It's found in all kinds of foods, so there's a good chance your taste buds will be happy with the additional fiber. Essential in avoiding liver disease. Effective in combating obesity. The reason increasing dietary fiber has such profound impact on your health is the ability to reduce inflammation. Inflammation is at the core of most disease, including cancer. Anything with the ability to consistently reduce inflammation has the potential to dramatically improve your health. 
It's for good reason the experts say that fiber is the most important recommendation of all. In this episode, we are going to uncover the facts behind fiber. We'll start with defining exactly what it is. Listed on the nutrition label of foods, there are different types with different effects on your body. While fiber is commonly thought of in terms of roughage and improved digestion, a little known fact is the role fiber plays in maintaining a healthy balance of bacteria in the gut. Known as microbiota or the popular term flora, bacteria need fiber. The reason is simple. Fiber is the food the gut flora or probiotics eat. If the flora are well fed, your body benefits. If not, as the saying goes, the natives get restless. The result is really bad news with serious health consequences. If the flora are properly fed with a good source of fiber, your body and your health benefit. But if the bacteria in your gut are neglected with a poor, or inadequate supply of fiber, the natives will get restless. And when the bacteria in your gut are restless, you've got problems. More than just indigestion, restless flora ultimately leads to inflammation. And inflammation is the seedbed for much of the chronic illness that plagues so many. It's time to get up close and personal with fiber. When finished, you will, one, know what fiber is, two, understand what fiber does, and three, be able to explain the relation between fiber and the gut flora. When we are done, you will be set to make the right choices to quickly and easily improve your health simply by adding fiber to your diet. And as research shows, your risk for disease will improve, for some, dramatically. Excess pounds will disappear, and most importantly, inflammation will decrease. When you think fiber, what comes to mind? For a lot of folks, images of whole grains and wheat bread, what is often called roughage. But there's more to fiber than just roughage. Would it surprise you that fiber is in fact a type of carbohydrate? It's true. With the exception of lignin, the various types of fiber are a class of carbohydrates that pass through the stomach without breaking down. While fiber can withstand the digestive acids of the stomach, things change lower in the gut. Encountering a dense concentration of bacteria or microbiota, beginning in the far end of the small, small intestine, the gut flora break down fiber to varying degrees. Gut flora, microbiota, and probiotics are all terms to describe the bacteria that live in our digestive tract. The impact these bacteria have on your health is huge. To better understand the influence, we'll take a short detour into the world of anatomy. Once you chew a mouthful of food, gulp, <laughs> down it goes, and a quick trip through the esophagus, and we've arrived at the stomach, a muscular organ specially designed to churn food with a liberal dose of acid and enzymes. The three macronutrients of protein, fats, and carbohydrates are further digested and absorbed in the small intestine. It's about 18 feet in length and uniquely lined with a velvety surface of finger-like projections called villi. Each villi has a tiny blood vessel or capillary that absorbs nutrients and then goes directly for processing in the liver. In addition to the capillaries is a structure called the lacteal. It's a lymph vessel that collects digested fat that goes directly into circulation bypassing the liver. Protein and carbs go to the liver while dietary fat is immediately available to the cells. Twisting and turning through the three sections of the small intestine, the food mass comes to the end of the ileum. Once in the ileum, things start to change with the most noticeable, noticeable being an increased presence of bacteria. It would be a mistake to think of bacteria found in the gut as just a few different kinds. With growing effort dedicated to studying the microbiota of the digestive tract, recent studies conclude the number of varieties ranging from two to 3,000. Each one 
with unique qualities. While we will dig into the difference in future videos, suffice it to say the differences can have a dramatic effect on the host. That's you. What kind of differences? How about this? Certain bacteria can contribute to obesity. Others can lead to irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, and others can cause liver disease. We'll talk about these aspects of bacteria and probiotics in an upcoming episode. So getting back to the anatomy of the gut transitioning from the, from the end part of the small intestine, that's the ileum, it passes through a valve called the ileocecal valve. Welcome to the large intestine, also known as the colon. To understand the difference between the small intestine and the colon, all you need to know are two distinctions. Number one, no villi. And number two, lots of bacteria. Lots of bacteria. Besides the abundance of bacteria, an abundance of nutrient-absorbing villi, there's another big difference. The colon is much shorter than the small intestine, five feet compared to 18 feet. Combined with special mucus-producing cells, the colon is custom-designed to handle the demands of trillions of bacteria cells. It's a give-and-take relationship, really. The bacteria release critical nutrients called short-chain fatty acids, or SCFAs, a compound that comes from the same family as omega-3s. Short-chain fatty acids are important. No, take that back. Short-chain fatty acids are super important for your health. Buckle your seatbelt and prepare to be amazed. Here are the key ways short-chain fatty acids impact your health. And by the way, if you suffer from high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, colitis, or irritable bowel, you will want to pay special attention. We've talked about the small intestine and looked at the structure of the villi and how the specially designed finger-like projections are specially suited to absorb nutrients released from readily digested foods or the non-fiber foods. Now it's time to take a close-up look at the colon. Lining the surface of the colon are cells called colonocytes. Keeping the cells healthy is accomplished with a steady diet of an exclusive colonocyte food called butyrate. Butyrate is a short-chain fatty acid that is made by a specific type of cell called firmicutes. <laughs> if your head is spinning right now, take a deep breath. Everything is going to be okay. I promise not to get any more technical, but it's important to understand the relation between the cells lining the colon, the gut flora, and butyrate. Healthy cells need butyrate, and the friendly bacteria, Firmicutes, makes butyrate. Oh, what a mouthful. <laughs> when the cells of the colon don't have a steady supply of butyrate, they get weak and no longer function normally. Leaky gut, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, even colon cancer. They all trace back to dysfunctional colonocytes and the lack of butyrate. If you want a healthy gut, if you want to reduce the chance of colon cancer, if you want to heal IBS or Crohn's, feed your large intestine butyrate. And before you Google where to buy butyrate, let me save you the effort. You don't buy butyrate. You make it. Well, you don't make it. The, battery in your, the bacteria in your gut make it, but they can only make it if you feed them a steady diet of, drum roll please, fiber. That's right, the bacteria in your gut, the microbiota or flora feed on fiber. If you don't feed them fiber, they don't make butyrate. And without butyrate, you've got problems. In light of the miserably low fiber intake for most Americans, it's no wonder digestive problems and colon cancer are on the rise. The benefits from good bacteria in our gut doesn't stop there. Short chain fatty acids are absorbed into the body where they have tremendously positive effects. Here are a few. They stimulate the body to burn fat. In the process, both body weight and fat storage decrease. Short chain fatty acids stimulate the release of a hormone called leptin. 
leptin triggers your brain to send out a neurological message saying, stop eating and start moving. The net result is less calories in and more calories out. You eat less and burn more. Short chain fatty acids cause a decrease in blood sugar and insulin levels, effectively reversing diabetes or prediabetes. Short chain fatty acids reduce cholesterol levels in the blood. Are you starting to like short chain fatty acids? Do you want to experience all of their incredible benefits? If so, eat more fiber. <laughs> Simply amazing. Who knew fiber and bacteria had such wide sweeping effects on our health? As good as it sounds, there is a danger with the whole fiber bacteria balance. It happens when you don't eat enough fiber. Here's the problem. Bacteria are little critters with a mind of their own. It's pretty much a one-track mind and it's focused on food. Food for bacteria is spelled C-A-R-B, carbs. <laughs> of course, they are happy to eat fiber carbs, but if we don't eat fiber, they'll eat whatever is available. For the typical Western diet, that means refined grains like wheat and pasta. Oh, and there's one other carb, sugar. They love sugar. The connection between too much sugar and conditions like diabetes and obesity is well known. But there's another problem with a diet high in refined carbohydrates like sugar and flour that introduces a whole other set of problems. It has to do with motility and directly connects to bacteria and their appetite for carbs. In the simplest sense, motility means movement. And movement, in light of the digestive tract, references the passage of food through the gut. A high motility rate means fast passage, and a low motility rate reflects a slow, even sluggish rate. Think constipation. In the world of gut health, the faster the motility rate, the better. Not only is there less time for calories to be absorbed into your body, The fast passage of food helps to keep bacteria in the large intestine where they belong. It's like a wave at the beach. People caught in the surf zone get pushed ashore. Dietary fiber pushes bacteria into the colon where they belong. Not eating enough fiber is a problem in two ways. First, you lose the wave action that keeps gut bacteria in the colon where they belong. Second, inadequate fiber essentially starves the little guys. If there is no fiber in the colon, the bacteria swim upstream into the small intestine. Don't forget, the typical Western diet is a high-carb diet. Refined carbs, breads, pasta, and sugar. If you don't eat enough fiber to feed the bacteria, in no time, they find their way into the small intestine. Bacteria in the small intestine is a bad thing, and it leads to some very serious health problems. The two biggest are liver disease and inflammation. Known as small intestine bacteria overgrowth, or SIBO for short, you don't want this to happen. The good news is that it can be fixed just by adding more fiber to your diet. How much? 30 grams a day. This is the current USDA recommendation, twice what the typical American currently consumes. Well, we've covered a lot of material that has likely shed new light on the question of fiber. Let's sum it up with a quick review. Here we go. Fiber is a type of non-digestible carbo carbohydrate with many health benefits. Fiber is digested by bacteria that live in our gut, known either as flora or more accurately, microbiota. The microbiota feed on the dietary fiber we eat. Bacteria break down fiber to an important nutrient called short-chain fatty acids. Short-chain fatty acids feed the cells lining our colon and are critical in preventing conditions like irritable bowel syndrome and leaky gut, and diseases like diabetes and colon cancer. Short-chain fatty acids have other benefits, including weight loss, hunger suppression, lowered blood sugar levels, and lowered cholesterol. 
And finally, inadequate fiber consumption results in bacteria in the small intestine, leading to increased inflammation and liver disease. Well, it's time to wrap up this introduction to fiber and the key role it plays in maintaining lifelong health. The average consumption is 15 grams a day. That's half of the daily recommended 30 grams and a fraction of the more than 100 grams a day consumed in times past. In light of the tremendous health benefits, increasing fiber intake is an easy health fix with huge benefits. 30 grams of fiber a day, it's a no-brainer.